I have already labored to show that it's not enough. It's not enough just to find cool second derivative is zero, right? It's not enough. Um, you have to say, well, just be careful, right? Now I'm going to give you the big example, and as soon as I as soon as I write it on the board in some second, in some senses, you're gonna be like, oh, of course. But this is it's important that you get in your, cate your category in your head for why that word may is there. Okay, so consider y equals x to the four. Okay. It's lovely to be able to take a really simple example and see what's going on here. Y equals x to the 4 is very easy to differentiate, right? I can find the first derivative and the second derivative almost without thinking. First derivative? 4x four four cubed. cubed. Second derivative? You just go again and you get 12x squared. Now immediately, and I'm not going to do this formally, we can just do this on the side and you can see, right? Immediately you can see, all right, where are you going to get stationary points? At the origin, right? So this implies there's a stationary point at 0, 0, and that's the only solution to the first derivative being 0. But when you look at the second derivative, right, there's clearly a spot where the second derivative is 0, right? I can say the second derivative is 0 at the same point, right, at 0, 0. Okay? But what does this look like? How do we usually, like we've drawn y equals x to the 4 before. What does this thing look like? Let's draw it. Yeah, yeah, you've got an idea, right? It's, um, it's a parabola that's, well, it's, it's, it's a bit flat at the bottom. Now, we've said, oh, it's a bit flat. It's a bit flat. <laughs> now we have, we have language for this. It's not just a bit flat, it is flat. It's flat in a way that a normal parabola is not. That's why when we draw it, you should draw it something like that, okay? At that point right there, the origin, right? So this is my quick and dirty y equals x to the 4, right? There is actually no concavity, right? It's not like those, those normal stationary points I was drawing before, right? At every point, if you have a parabola, the maths will tell you, the numbers will tell you that everywhere in this domain, I'm concave up, okay? Well, when you go ahead and you have a look at this guy, right? You have to think about the numbers here. It's an even function, right? It's an even function. It's concave up. Almost everywhere. Almost everywhere, right? Concave up, 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 up. Also up, 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 and up. But at the origin, there is no concavity. At x equals zero, the second derivative is zero. Now, have a look at my arrows. Have a look at my concavity, my red concavity arrows, right? Is there a change in concavity? No. Clearly not. It's concave up on the left. It's concave up on the right. There is no point of inflection here, okay? So I would say there is no point of inflection as there's no change in the sign of the concavity, right? And I can draw the table that is to demonstrate that. In fact, just because it's so trivially simple, and this is meant to be like a kind of seminal example for us, let's just quickly draw the table, right? So you need, I always, by the way, if you're trying to do this in a quick way, you should have the table, I think you should have lines. I think you can get away without ruling them because you have to draw so many of these things. I always go like this, half, half, and then half it twice to get quarters, right? Because then you'll get exactly the right lines that you need. So it's, it's not really that hard. It shouldn't take you long to draw this thing. So you've got your x values that you're gonna test, you're going to test, I've got everything in terms of y's, not in terms of f's, right? Uh, I know at zero, that's where interesting things happen, happen. To the left and to the right, well, there it is. There's my first second derivative, sorry. So it's going to be 12, <laughs> and then it's going to be 12. No change in the sign. Simple, simple. So could you just make the um, argument straight from the fact that the second derivative is, has an x squared, meaning that um, it's always greater than the in this particular example, yes, you could. So um, what, what Raf is talking about is I could say um, from this line, I would guess, I would say, but d squared y on dx squared is uh, greater than or equal to 0 for, um, for all values of x in the domain. Therefore, it can't possibly have a change in, change in sign because it will never, ever, ever go negative. That's a possibility, but it's not a very. I, I'm not. I'm not going to teach you that as a um, as an approach because, like, this is pretty much the only example where it works. There were plenty of functions where it's like, no, it changes sign all the time. But at this particular point, I'm just interested in this particular point. It doesn't change sign there, 
So therefore, no point. Is it the point, like, is it for all points to have um, even power? Yes. So, well, kind of. So x to the 6, you can see I could do this exact same process again, right? And it's going to look like this, but, but steeper, except right there, it's still going to have, well, you know, just really quickly, if you went x to the 6, then when you differentiate once, you'll get 6x to the 5. And when you differentiate again, you'll get, right? So everything that is um, of this, sorry, 4. Everything that's of this form will have a, a second derivative being 0 at that point, And you'll have no point of inflection, OK? Because it's an even function, so it's going to go down and it's going to come up, right? So in fact, it's a minimum. Okay.